This is free response question six from the 2024 AP Calc BC exam. This problem is exclusive to the BC exam, of course, because it deals with infinite series. The Maclaurin series for a function f is given by this expression and converges to f of x for all x in the interval of convergence. It can be shown that the Maclaurin series for f has a radius of convergence of six. Part A says determine whether the Maclaurin series for f converges or diverges at x equals 6, and give a reason for our answer. So we know that the radius of convergence is 6, and of course the series is centered at 0, since it's a Maclaurin series, but that doesn't tell us if it converges or not at the endpoints. So at x equals 6, for example, we would have to plug that in and see, does it converge or not? Well, let's plug it in and investigate. Here is the Maclaurin series with x replaced with 6. So we've plugged in x equals 6, and then we can simplify. 6 to the n and 6 to the n will cancel out, and we just have n plus 1 over n squared. This is a great candidate for the comparison test, because n plus 1 in the numerator, well, that might as well just be n, and the denominator's n squared, so factors of n would cancel out, and we'd have 1 over n. So it seems like we should try comparing this to the harmonic series. Of course, the harmonic series diverges, so we could only use the comparison test to actually get a conclusion if the terms of this series are bigger than the terms of the harmonic series, and in fact they are, because certainly n over n squared is equal to 1 over n, hence if we add 1 to the numerator on the left, we make it bigger than 1 over n, and this thing on the left is the terms of our series. So yeah, the terms of this series are bigger than the terms of the harmonic series, and so this series must diverge also. So the Maclaurin series for f diverges at x equals 6 by the comparison test. The harmonic series diverges, and this series consists of terms that are greater than the harmonic series terms. And of course, both the harmonic series and this series consist of positive terms, so we can use the comparison test. All right, on to part b. It can be shown that f of negative 3 equals this, which equals this, and that the first three terms of this series sum to this number. We are asked to show that the error in this approximation, the third partial sum, is less than 1 over 50. So that's the error of the approximation. f of negative 3 is the true value of the function, and minus s3 is subtracting that partial sum. And so the magnitude of this difference is the difference between the partial sum and the true value of f of negative 3. We're trying to show that error is less than 1 over 50. Note also to get from here to here, you just do a little negative 3 divided by 6, and so you get that negative 1 half with the common exponent of n. But it was nice of them to do that for us. So for this problem, since it's concerning the error in a partial sum of what you should notice is an alternating series, because we have a negative to the power of n, to put a bound on the error, we'll use the alternating series estimation theorem. The alternating series estimation theorem gives us a very simple bound for the error of a partial sum f of negative 3, which was given to us as this, is certainly an alternating series, and its terms decrease in absolute value. If we ignore this negative, the terms of the series look like this, and these decrease in absolute value and converge to zero as n approaches infinity. That's pretty clear because the degree of the denominator, 2, is greater than the degree of the numerator. Not to mention the denominator has this 2 to the n term. So certainly these terms will decrease to 0. So we can apply the alternating series estimation theorem, which tells us the error of a partial sum, say the nth partial sum, is at most the magnitude of the n plus 1th term of the series. The error is at most the magnitude of the first excluded term. And that looks like this. So this error, which we are trying to put a bound on by the alternating series estimation theorem, must be less than the magnitude of the first excluded term. This is the third partial sum, so the first excluded term is the fourth term, a4. And we can find a4 by plugging n equals 4 into the general term of the series. That would give us 4 plus 1 over 4 squared, 
so 5 over 16, and negative 1 over 2 to the power of 4. But since we have the absolute value bars, the negative goes away, so it's just 1 over 2 to the power of 4. This is equal to 5 divided by 2 to the 4 times 16. 2 to the 4 is 16, and 16 times 16 gives us that denominator of 256. And 5 times 50 is 250, which is less than 256. So 5 is not even a 50th of 256. So this fraction, 5 over 256, is indeed less than 1 50th, which is exactly what we set out to prove, that this error is less than 1 over 50. And so that completes part B. Moving on then to part C. Find the general term of the Maclaurin series for f prime, the derivative of f. Find the radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series for f prime as well. All right, so here's our Maclaurin series. Should be very simple to take the derivative. There's only one variable there. It's just x to the n. And so we'll take the derivative just using the power rule. So taking the derivative of this general term, the exponent of n drops down as a factor. And then we just reduce the power of x by 1, x to the n minus 1. And so we get here, and then n over n squared, we can cancel out a factor of n. And so it looks like this. That is the general term of f prime. So the derivative of f is equal to this series, at least on the interval of convergence. We were asked also to identify the radius of convergence for this series that we found by taking the derivative. You're expected to know that differentiation term by term does not change the radius of convergence of a series. Neither does integrating term by term. So since we were given originally that the radius of convergence is 6. We see that there, radius of convergence of 6. So when we differentiate term by term to get this series, that radius of convergence does not change. It is still 6. It's certainly intended that you would just know the radius of convergence does not change. That's why they gave us that piece of information. But you could use the ratio test if you weren't sure, and you would arrive at this solution, that x has to be between negative 6 and 6, so the radius of convergence, again, is 6. All right, on to the final part, part d. Let g of x equal this series. Use the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series for g. So if you're a little rusty on the ratio test, you can look at this example that I just wrote out for part c. We're going to use the ratio test now for part d and this new function g of x. So here's the series for g of x. When does it converge? Well, the ratio test tells us we can look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 in the numerator and a n in the denominator. So in the numerator of this ugly expression, we see a general term of the series, but with n plus 1 plugged in for n. So instead of n plus 1 here, we plugged n plus 1 in for n, and so we actually have n plus 2. And instead of x to the 2n, we have x to the 2n plus 2, because the 2 distributes through the n plus 1. We then have n plus 1 squared, and of course, 3 to the n plus 1. And then just a general term of the series, a n, in the denominator. So this is the limit of the magnitude of the ratio of consecutive terms of the series. And the ratio test tells us that this series will converge when this magnitude has a limit that's less than 1. In this first step, we just rewrite the fractions and simplify a little bit. Of course, dividing by this fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So you see the n squared pops all the way up to the numerator. As for the 3n, that also goes to the numerator, but then it cancels out with the 3 to the n plus 1 in the denominator, leaving a single factor of 3 in the denominator n plus 1 squared is still in the denominator, and this n plus 1 is also still in the denominator. In the numerator, of course, we still have that n plus 2, and the x to the 2n plus 2 mostly cancels out with x to the 2n. It just leaves behind two factors of x, so x squared. And this simplifies nicely, because in the numerator, we have n cubed plus some stuff, if we were to distribute here, and in the denominator, we also have n cubed 
plus some other stuff if we were to distribute everything. So the n terms will completely cancel out. They have the same degree, three on the top and bottom. That just leaves us with the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x squared over three. And there's no n here. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this is just this. And then to find the radius of convergence, we just ask when this is less than one. Well, if this is less than one, multiplying across by three, we get that the magnitude of x squared is less than three. Now, if the magnitude of x squared is less than three, x must be between negative root three and positive root three. And so the radius of convergence is root three. We haven't investigated what happens at the endpoints. The ratio test doesn't tell us about that, but that's also not important for the question. The radius of convergence is root three. And that completes our solution to free response question six from the 2024 AP Calc BC exam. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. If you want a little bit more practice, also check out my 10 hours of AP Calc ABBC FRQs video in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.